Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art needed in this place. Without you, we can do nothing. We honor your presence in this place. Father, be glorified, be magnified, be exalted in this place. We love you. There's none like you. We honor you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our God is worthy. He's wonderful. Why don't you take a moment to bless his name? Why don't you take a moment to say hallelujah, glory to God? Why don't you take a moment to leave an offering on the table, an offering of thanksgiving, an offering of praise to our God? And if you don't feel like it, how much more valuable that offering would be because it will be known as a sacrifice of praise, praise God, bringing a sacrifice and putting it on the table before the Lord, a sacrifice, praise God, a thanksgiving, a sacrifice, a worship, a lifting up the most holy God when you don't feel like it. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Our God is awesome in this place, praise God. I got as worthy, I got as wonderful, I got as glorious, I got as more than enough. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, we bless you today. We thank you for this time, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God. And we're going to do what you have instructed us, Lord God. We believe, oh God, to be at this place. And we declare that we're at the right place at the right time in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And the just shall live by faith. And we're still talking about the blueprint. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And this is the ruling class. And we are talking about the blueprint. And today we want to focus on the brand new you. The brand new you. Praise God. The brand new you. And we are decreeing and declaring today in Jesus' name that we are speaking to the brand new you. You are one that says that I cannot continue to go around the same mountain. I cannot continue to do the same thing. I'm going to a new place of glory. I'm living up to the blueprint that God has given me for my life. I want what God wants. I want it more than anything. In fact, uh, you're one that's filled with a desire. You're filled with the expectation. You are filled with anticipation. There's something in you that's saying there has got to be more that I cannot continue to live in this place, but I must arise. I must ascend. I sense God calling me higher. I sense God wants to increase me. I sense God wants to be glorified through my life. He wants to be glorified. He can only be glorified through that new creature, that new creature that lines up with the blueprint that he has for our life. Praise God. Again, we want to share what is a blueprint. That blueprint is a photogenic, uh, photographic print made with white lines on blue black background showing something will be made. In other words, like the picture that's next to us, praise God. And uh, it's on a blue uh, background. It's showing a pattern of something to be made, whether it's a house, an apartment building, or what have you. It is showing that there is something that's to be made. And just to think, another definition for a blueprint is a detailed plan of something to be done. In fact, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God had a blueprint for your life, something to be done, something for you to conform to, something for you to be transformed into, because this blueprint would represent God Almighty. It would be like Jesus saying, when you see me, you seen the Father. You seen what the Father sent. You seen the actions and the ways of the Father. You are God's blueprint today. We declare that you 
are seeing the brand new you at this hour. When we come to Christ, the Bible says you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. What must that look like? When we look back through history and we see many people who represented God, they had this thing about them that First of all, if we would think about Moses, we would think he was one that knew that he couldn't go anywhere without the presence of the Lord. He knew that that would be his trademark. How shall people know, God, that you sent me if they do not see your presence upon me? How will they know that we are your people if we're not represented, Father, by your presence? So that surely is a part of the blue friend, that we are to bear the mark of God's presence. Are you bearing the mark of God's presence today? Praise God. Years ago, I often speak about this young lady. I won't tear her here, but um, this was years ago. And I saw her at a convention uh, we were having, and she had a little doily on her head, and she was serving water. Now, there were many preachers there. There were many, uh, uh, you know, big um um, I won't, well, let's just say preachers are, you know, there to come to preach and the bishops and the different ones. But why is it that this young lady took all of my attention? Why is it that I had eyes only for this young lady? You know why? Because Lord, she looked like Jesus. I could sense the presence of the Lord when she moved past. There was deliverance even in her passing by. When she moved past, you were transformed. You were tapped into Jesus. And as she brought water up to the pulpit and then she went back to the door, I could only look at her. I don't know what they preached that night. I don't know what they said that night. I don't remember none of the names. The only thing I remember that night was, I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. I have many experiences and encounters that I well remember because of the presence of the Lord, because there were people packing. They were not packing blanks, but they had the real deal, praise God. They were bearing the presence, praise God. Are you bearing the presence of the Lord today, praise God? Oh, yes, yes. A part of our blueprint. That is a must. That is a necessity, praise God. Amen. And when we look, bless God, at um, the book, let's look at uh, Galatians, praise God, Galatians for a minute, I believe 522 through 23. It says, uh, but the fruit of the spirit, the result of his presence within us, when God's presence is within us, this is what takes place. This is how we know the presence is working for us because uh, we have love meaning that we have an unselfish concern for others. We're concerned for others and not just ourselves, praise God. We have joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Have you noticed a lot of saints out there with joy today? Where has the joy of the Lord gone? Where are those who are rejoicing today that their names are written down in heaven? Where is the joy Paul spoke about? Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. When we have joy, that means our testimony is lining up with the will of God. We have not been robbed through disobedience. Uh, uh, we have not been robbed of our joy. God, that's a, one of the fruits of the spirit is joy. Praise God. In a peace. How many pack in peace today? Praise God. We talking about the brand new you, bless God. We talking about the building that God is working on today. We talking about the God that wants to flip the script in our lives and, and want us to bring forth the fruit to praise God. This is the fruit that was in Jesus, bless God. And so we want to look at the peace, inner peace. How's your peace life today? Praise God. How is our peace life? And one way we tell how our peace life is, is when things happen and uh, are we do we get bent out of shape? Uh, you get a flat tire, you're on your way to somewhere. Do we get bent out of shape? Or uh, is there inner peace keeping you, holding you together? Are you standing there when you somebody hit that bump and maybe scratched it? 
Are you standing there in peace? Or are you being out of shape today? What about the brand new you? We're talking about the brand new you and the way you're going to be operating. And God forbid, prayerfully, no one ever bumps our bumper or scratches us or what have you, bless God. But God has given us an inner peace. That means peace in the midst of a storm. It means I'll give you a real life situation. It's been very hot, but we've been blessed because we had central air. Well, the central air went out uh, about a day and a half ago, went out. So now we know what heat feels like, praise God. And not that we didn't, but oh, I tell you, sweat rolled. But thank God, thank God, thank God. We got fans all around and waiting for somebody to come and service us, praise God. But when things happen unexpectedly, does it rob you of your peace? Does it pull you out of the place of peace? When pressure comes, watch it, watch it, watch it. What about this new creature? If you're built by the blueprint of God, that means that you're staying intact. Your foundation is not going to crack. So it may be that when we find ourselves uh, moving apart from the fruits of the spirit, we have to check ourselves because we are new creatures. And this is the blueprint, praise God. This is what we look like. We have inner peace and we have patience. How is your patience lately? Ooh, how is your patience with those little ones when they begin to uh, jockey for your attention around the house uh, with uh, uh, loved ones that may need this from you, that, or situations on your job? Uh, you may be on your way to uh, work and there's a traffic jam of people moving slow. How is your patience? What about this blueprint that God has set in? Uh, could it be that we've not eaten our spinach? Could it be that we've not been eating up the par? Could it be that we've not been um, participating with God's transformation process? But we see we want to be new creatures. We want to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The Bible said, they that know their God shall do exploits. You are a new creature, praise God. And so when things go wrong to stretch our patience, we got to have a patient, a fruit called patience on the inside of us that keeps us in harmony with the will of God, that keeps us, praise God, just moving and flowing with the Holy Ghost, that we don't lose our balance. We don't get bent out of shape. We just keep it moving in God because we are supernatural creatures of the Most High God. We were built to last, praise God. We were built to last, bless God. We were built for a day like today, praise God. The brand new you, the brand new you is emerging right now, praise God, right now. You know, I think about when they talked about um, birds and um, different things, they said that sometimes they would put a chicken, baby chicks, they put them in a certain atmosphere so that they can break forth into a certain atmosphere. Are you keeping yourself in the right atmosphere that's conducive for miracles? Are you in the right atmosphere that's conducive that keeps you in the presence of the Lord? Have you been dwelling in that secret place that God is wooing us into in this hour, praise God, because you are a brand new creature. Just look at your blueprint. Look at this picture. But Let's take a moment. I watch these home decorating shows. I love to watch these home decorating shows. Oh my God. And so they get in there and they tear down walls because somebody has a vision. They see a better way of living. They say, I can tear down these walls in this house and we can uh, uh, change some things. And so they get to tear down the walls. And guess what? On the inside of the walls, they find shoddy wiring. They find pipes that have been laid in the wrong direction, screws that have been put in that were not the right screws, wiring that was not the right, right wiring, praise God. They find all these things that are out of order. Today is a day that we can look and we can check ourselves to make sure that the blueprint is what the master has ordered. Do we see that love, that peace, that joy, that patience, praise God? Um, do we see kindness? You know, 
Look at that. Kindness is a part of the blueprint. Are you kind? Or do you, when you're frazzled, you know, and you got your focus and you want to do something else and somebody's little kid is uh, trying to get you, do you snap at them or uh, 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 somebody else cuts you off uh, on the street? Are you kind? Are uh, you maybe with your sister friends or, or whoever, somebody may step on your toes. What, what does that look like in your world? But the brand new you bears kindness. That's a part of the blueprint for your script, for my script that God has put on the inside of us. Kindness, being kind to people, even when they are not kind to us. For if we be kind to people that are because they are kind to us, what glory does that give God? But he wants us to do that. But when they are unkind to us, and we can still be kind to them. We can still pray for those that despitefully use us. We can still keep it moving, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Kindness, uh, another one of those fruits is goodness, uh, faithfulness, uh, faithfulness, praise God. Gentleness, self-control. Oh my God, self-control. In the midnight hour, when that apple pie gets to calling you. In the morning, when those donuts and all those sweet treats begin to call. Self-control. Yeah, in that situation too, self-control. Mm -hmm. That situation too, self-control. Are we built according to God's blueprint? Praise God. You know, the Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. Let the weak say that I am strong. It matters what you say in this hour because there's a brand new you emerging. There's an unveiling of a brand new you at this hour. You're coming out of that cocoon at this hour. You are different. So you can't talk any kind of way. You can't think any kind of way. Praise God because you're lining up with the blueprint of God and you don't want anything behind walls that should not be because when the winds come, you want to be able to stand your ground. You want to be able to allow people to see Christ within you, the hope of glory. You want them to see Jesus. You want them to see the light shining within you. Praise God. The brand new you brings glory to God. The brand new you does, praise God. So let the weak say that I'm strong. So what are you saying about the brand new you? When you give yourself a pep talk, and we can, we can tell our own self to be encouraged, praise God. The Bible said David had to encourage himself. How do you encourage yourself, praise God? What do you tell yourself? We have to tell ourselves the things that God's blueprint has uh, has uh, says about us. What do we see in the blueprint? He says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You can do all things through Christ that stiffen of you. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loved you. If God be for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You don't go nowhere by yourself. The angels of the Lord encamp up around about them that fear the Lord to deliver them. Girl, brother, you're going to lay hands on the sick and the sick going to recover. I see you doing it. What are you seeing about yourself this hour? What do you see? What does that vision look like? You're going to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. You're going to cast out those things that are harassing others. You're going to cast those things out. You're going to do it by the power of the name of Jesus. Praise God. You are bold, courageous. The righteous are bold as a lion. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and of a sound mind. We talk about the brand new you, praise God. The brand new you, you know, that one that's full of joy and love and the compassion of Jesus, praise God. The brand new you, bless God. They're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. What do you tell yourself about you? What kind of pep talk? Do you read the word of God for your ears to hear it? Do you look at God's blueprint? Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Behold, I give unto you power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy, and nothing by an enemy shall hurt you. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you willing to be led by the Holy Spirit? If you talk to yourself, say, girl, brother, you are, you are individual. You are led by the Spirit of God. You are sensitive to the Spirit of God. We want to be led by the Spirit of God because how else can we be led? The flesh can't lead us. And apart from man, man needs to, even our leaders need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So we want to follow those that are following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. God wants to bring us up in our expectation. He wants to bring us up. You know, I had a little uh, funny thing that happened yesterday. I was uh, with the G kids, the grandkids, and we were at the skating rink. And uh, the youngest one hadn't been on roller skates. The oldest one, he had been on so he was you know kind of grounded in a sense you know but the youngest one hadn't been on and he wanted to skate now here we are now just look at us let's say today that we are in a boat today all of us are in a boat let's just say we're in a boat and god wants to do something fresh and new with us in this hour and it calls for us to come up out of our comfort zone it calls for us to be willing to take risks it calls for us to be willing to do things those things that we've been hiding and we didn't want to do it calls for us to come out and um put ourselves in situations where we don't normally put ourselves in because god may be calling you praise god who knows where to minister a calling just your presence to be at a place you're invited to a function you say i don't go to these kind of functions they make me uncomfortable and i don't mingle with those people and i just don't want you know no, no, God may be calling you to go. He's, he, may be, he may be calling you to come up out of your comfort zone. So it means that we have to rise up. And so this little one was at the skating ring and he looked out and saw all the, the, the ones skating out there. He had a desire. He had expectation. He had anticipation. He had passion. He had desire. And right then God began to talk to me in that spot. And said, now just look at this. He's willing to take a risk and walk on the water. He's willing to go where he's never been. He is excited about it. He's not letting fear keep him. He is charged with expectation. He is charged with hope. He is charged with wanting more out of life than what we have. And he's willing to do something different, to do something he's never done, to get something he's never had. And so we let him go around there. And and then the uh, attendants saw that said, we need to probably tighten his skates because he's not used to being on. So he went out and still it was difficult, but he was charged. I'm going back out anyway. He was charged to go back out. And then the next thing we decided, uh, we get him one of those things you hold on for the little kids to hold on and skate. Whatever it took, he wanted to get out of the boat. He wanted to do something different. He wanted a new experience. He wanted a new encounter. Oh, glory to God. We have got to have more, praise God. God want us to encounter his glory. God want to show us things that will cause us, oh my God, to wonder, praise God, to ponder, praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And in the end, but before we left the skating rink, he said, Grandma, I'm going to put this down. Now I want to go out without it. I want to go out and I want to skate without this thing. He was charged. He still had this momentum on the inside. He still had this passion on the inside. Have you lost your passion for more? He still had this desire on the inside. Have you lost your desire for more? He still had this hope. I can do this thing. He had this dream. He saw himself going around the ring without this thing. And guess what? He did that thing, praise God went back out there without that thing and went as fast as he could <laughs> and went around but he did it and all the while god was talking to me all the while god was looking at me i want to send you into some new places in this season i want you to have that kind of atmosphere i want you to have that kind of uh uh expectation 
I want you to have that kind of desire. I don't want you holding back on me in this season. I don't want you drawing back. I want you ready to go. I want you ready at my back and at my command. I want you ready to serve me. And I want you to do it with joy, praise God. I want you to do it with great, whoo, I want you to do it. I want you to be anticipating. I want you to have expectation, praise God. Ah, uh, praise God. Cindy says, follow the blueprint. Uh, oh, this uh, screen is moving on me. Okay, Val says, good afternoon. Cindy says, the Holy Spirit draws out of our cocoon. Amen. It's time to fly, butterfly. Uh, Tasha says, blessings, everybody. Tasha says, uh, get out of your comfort zone. Be willing to walk on the water. Uh, praise God. Okay, spiritual. Okay, they can read your comments on the side. Okay. Mike said, we need a new encounter with God. Yes, we do, Mike. Amen. Praise God. Cindy, bold as a lion. Yes, bold as a lion. So how do we get to that place? Faith comes by here and hearing by the word of God. We have got to begin to read God's blueprint. We've got to begin to decree and declare it. How bad do you want it? Do you want it enough to come up off of that chair in the morning and grab a, maybe a cup of tea or something other and get somewhere and begin to declare and decree and begin with great intentions? This is who I am. I am who my daddy says that I am and I can do what my daddy says that I can do. And I'm filled with passion. I'm filled with an expectation. I'm ready for a new adventure, praise God. How bad do we want it? Or will we continue to go around the same mountain? Will we settle for yesterday's manna when God said, I want you to have new and fresh every day? Throw that old stuff away. Get rid of it. Fresh manna, fresh revelation. A fresh encounter with your daddy, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. God, you're wonderful, praise God. There is a brand new you emerging today. A brand new you. We cannot change where we have been. But glory to God, we can participate in the change of where we're going. And we can give things like expectation and hope and uh, anticipation and passion and all these things uh, in our hearts. God wants us to desire spiritual gifts. He said, desire them. I don't want to give it to you and you don't desire it. Remember, we always go into the first chapter in the book of Esther with a king. They had the second party and the king told the service and the king prophetically rem uh, reminds us of a uh, God, our God. The king said, give them all they want, but not more than they want. How much do you want today? Have you put a limit on God? Let's take the limit off. God, forgive us for putting limits on you, Father. Let's talk to God about this situation. God, I put limits on you. I've been afraid. I've had a drawback spirit. I've not had the desire. I'm always cowering up under in a fear. Oh my God. Could that be why God is not ready to help us walk on the water? Father grandson yesterday, he walked on the water. He fell, he got back up and kept walking. By the grace of God, he stayed out there until he could walk and praise God proudly. Grandma, I'm going back out there without the aid of this thing that helps you to escape. And he did just that. I want. He said, I want to leave that. Him and Jesus went back out on the water, praise God. Where is that kind of attitude with us today? Oh, bless God. You know, I love the Lord today. I am thankful to the Lord today. I didn't even get to where we were going. But you know what? I love that about the Holy Spirit. We don't have to try to force our way into whatever we have on the script. Because it's necessary that we hear his voice. One word from God can change everything. It is necessary in this hour and every hour that we flow with the leadership of the Holy Spirit Otherwise, we will miss our destination, praise God. So please be mindful on this is a week. Uh, we want to declare and decree the word of the Lord, not only on the li over the lives of others, but over our lives. We want to speak to ourselves. Uh, we want to look at the blueprint. What's missing? Do you see boldness in your life? Well, there's no reason not to have it. God says, 
he's given it to us. Meditate on my word that you be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who leap with a knock, who bring forth the fruit in his season. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. He tells Joshua, Joshua, you getting ready to be promoted. Well, you get ready, whether you think it or not, you get ready, you going. Yeah, I called you. So what you're going to do, I'm going to give you the blue. I'm going to give you the strategy. Praise God. Meditate on my word day and night. Think about it. I tell you the righteous are bold as lion. Think about what that means. Toss it through your mind. Chew it up. Keep chewing it up until it gets on the inside of you. You won't have to do nothing. My word will empower you if you chew it. Papa chewed the spinach and the spinach empowered him. God's word is powerful, but we got to eat it. Oh my, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So we want to make sure in this hour, let's decree and declare the word of the Lord. Let's look at God's blueprint for our lives. Each one of us set it out. We know what we're not measuring up, what we're not lining up. And we know some things that need to shift. We know some faulty wiring on the inside. Let's get rid of that stuff. Let's put the new stuff in. Praise God. Let's get the word of the Lord. Let's be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Praise God. God wants to do some wonderful things with you in this season. And you know what? He's going to do it. Praise God. You're coming to a new place of glory. You know what? You're going to look at yourself in about seven days. You're going to say, you know what? I've increased. Why? Because you flow with God's plan. You uh, decided to use his strategy. You decided to get into the word of the Lord. You have decided, praise God, to meditate on that word. Praise God. You decide to take that gospel, you know, like you take a prescription for a doctor. You're going to take God's prescription, the word of the Lord, and be transformed. And I am too, praise God. Uh, seven days out, we're going to look good. Seven more days. Oh, my God. And seven more days. We're going to go to seven days plan, praise God. And we're going to be challenging each other. Let's line up with God's blueprint. God is out to do something brand new. And guess what? He gets the glory for our story, praise God. So God bless you all. Father, we bless you. We praise you for your marvelous people, Lord. We just Pray, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you for a special impartation that only you can give us today. Praise God. All right. We are folding this impartation up by the grace of God. Yeah, we believe in God to release a special impartation. Father, we need you to release something to us today. Lord, that will change our lives, Father. We want that new creature, Father God to step forward, to stand strong, to represent, Father God. The brand new you is being released. It's coming forward, Father. So we thank you for the strategy, the plan, and everything, Lord, to get it done, and the grace of God. So at the count of three, we want you to receive. Now, this is not for everybody, but this is for somebody that believes that God can take the foolish things to confine the wise. One, two, three. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, bless your awesome people today, oh, Father. In the name of Jesus, bless their families and their loved ones, Lord. Keep them safe, Lord God. Lord God. Thank you and praise you, Father, for your generosity, your kindness, God. And we thank you, God, that we want more. And we declare ourselves to be brand new, Father. We declare and decree it to be a new day, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And that you shall be glorified, Father, and you shall be magnified through our lives as never before. In Jesus' name, praise God. We are water walkers and pioneers of new territory. God bless you, praise God. And please don't forget, do your assignment seven days out. You're going to look much better. I'm going to look much better. Seven days from there, we're going to challenge each other through this season until by Labor Day, we're going to be some transformed people. Now, eat, get into God's blueprint. If it's just one verse, the power is when you get it in you. Oh, yeah. All right. God bless. Have a great day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God.